Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Philanthropic Five Awards. Please welcome the President and CEO of United Way, Amy Lindner. everyone. It is so good to see those of you who are able to be with us in person. I love seeing you all look fabulous, what you're wearing. I love seeing your smiling faces. Um, is that my notes? Yeah. Okay. Somebody else's notes. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> welcome to everybody who's able to join us here in the War Memorial. Thank you to everybody who is logged on and joining us virtually. You know, this event is always so special. It's a night where we really get to celebrate the achievement of just six remarkable individuals, our philanthropic five and our philanthropic youth. Right, yes. If you've ever attended this event in the past, you know you are gonna walk away absolutely inspired by the work these incredible leaders are doing every single day. Tonight is made possible only through the incredible efforts of United Way's emerging leaders, a group who knows a thing or three about giving back to community. The emerging leaders, for those of you who don't know, is a network of engaged donors in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. And our emerging leaders are connected to each other through networking events, interactive leadership panels, and volunteer opportunities. They have a particular passion around education initiatives for our local youth. The Emerging Leaders Council is a group of extra special leaders who assist in the strategy and planning of the Emerging Leaders Initiatives. And without them, tonight's event would not have been possible. We are really, really grateful to them. At this time, I'd like to invite all members of Emerging Leaders to please stand. If you have not already joined this great group of people and you are in your 20s, 30s, and 40s and care about these issues like I know so many of you do, please find them or a staff member from United Way to talk about how you can join. Since 2008, United Way's emerging leaders have recognized five amazing community leaders in the Philanthropic Five Awards. These are leaders who have made extraordinary commitments of leadership, volunteerism, mentoring, and philanthropy in our community. This year also marks the eighth time we are recognizing one philanthropic youth for their outstanding achievements. <laughs> If you know this year's winners or one of our past winners, you pretty quickly start to see a pattern in these honorees. They care deeply about our community and they know that with some focus and effort, they can personally make a difference. They have a clear vision of the kind of world, the kind of community they want to see and they develop a strong plan to make that vision a reality. They are filled with energy, with enthusiasm, and a great deal of passion. They know their biggest successes will be achieved together. They know that alone they can do a lot, but together, united, we can change the world. And we are so, so proud to be with them and honoring them this evening. Tonight, I'm celebrating my 10th anniversary of my very own P5 award. <laughs> In 2012, oh gosh, there I am. In 2012, I see you, Valerie. In 2012, I was just making the leap from practicing law to committing to nonprofit work as my day job. And I was 10 days into my brand new role at Meta House at the time when I accepted the P5 award. So for me, thinking about that night, it, it really just, just like melds together. And for me, it's just really what launched every amazing thing I have been so privileged to work on since. I knew at that time, and I know even more now, that I was joining an amazing community of past and future winners, like Michelle Nettles, and Judge Mosley, and Deanna Singh, and J Jasmine Johnson, and Caitlin Cullen, Jennifer Bartolotta, Jason Ray, and so many others. This incredible entire generation of people who care deeply about this community and who are brave enough to be optimistic about our ability to affect change. You're gonna see some of our most fabulous past winners tonight who are gonna to help us present tonight's awards. 
You know, before I turn this over uh, and really get our program launched, I just want to say for a second something that I think is so special about emerging leaders and tonight's honorees. And, and I think about the different ways that different people see the world. And there are people who see our worlds, who see our communities, and just don't even see problems right under their nose. And there are some people who see those problems in either through pessimism or not knowing what to do or just not caring, just sort of shrug and keep going. And then there is a special group of people who see it, who push up their sleeves and say, I think we can do something about this. And I, that's, that's our emerging leaders. You all see the problems and push up your sleeves. And we all at United Way are so deeply proud to be shoulder to shoulder with you, sleeves up, getting to work. This is one of my favorite nights of the year, so let's get started. We want to take a moment to introduce our wonderful sponsors. The sponsor of tonight's event has been the sponsor of the P5 Award since the very beginning. Thank you, BMO Harris Bank, for your generous support. And please welcome Regional President of the Northern States for BMO Wealth Management, Judd Snyder. What a great night. I am so thankful to be here with all of you again. We get to celebrate one of our favorite nights of the year. Uh, tonight's a night that's always a little bit different, and it's a night I look forward to each and every year. This is our 15th year as presenting sponsor. Huh, 2008. Right, you kind of do the math. Yeah, we've been presenting sponsor for every year. And for all of us at BMO, this is an event that aligns so closely with our core values of community and equity. Tonight we celebrate five young leaders and an even younger student leader who with their actions as well as their words are working to make Milwaukee a better place. Tonight, tonight we celebrate positivity. We accentuate community engagement and we turn the narrative from divisiveness to inclusion. Tonight, tonight we get to hear directly from young men and women who are putting the work in to build community and make our city better for our children and our children's children. I can't wait to hear their stories. As a United Way board member, as an executive with BMO, and as a proud Milwaukeean, it's nights like tonight that give me hope and make me proud. Congratulations to all six of our award winners tonight for this well-deserved recognition. Keep doing the work you're doing. Know that there are countless others in the community around you cheering you on and watching what you do next. Congratulations. much, Judd. Without the generous generosity of our media sponsor, many of you may not have known about tonight's event. The Milwaukee Business Journal has been our media sponsor for the Philanthropic Five Awards since its inception. This successful partnership has brought community-wide awareness to this event, as well as the amazing work our winners are doing in the community. They also often um, look at our list when they're thinking about their own awesome 40 Under 40 Awards. It is my great pleasure to introduce Mark Cass, Editor-in-Chief of the Milwaukee Business Journal. It's great to be here with Blue. That was a great introduction, Amy. Thank you. Uh, you're right. We actually do look at your list, but I think you also look at our list for some of your winners. Because uh, I'm looking down here at one who may have been a winner this year, Mark so, uh, you know, I think it goes both ways. We, 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 we really help each other out. So, you know, I'm happy to be here. This is, as you know, I attend a lot of events all year, and this is always one of my favorite events because of the energy, because of the activities, and because of who we're honoring. Young individuals, emerging leaders who are making an impact on our community, something we need more of, something we've seen a great advance in but, but still need more of. So I want to first... First, I want to congratulate our winners. Uh, a, special, a special congratulations to Markela, who is a 40 under 40 for 2022. And then I would say for the other four, you, sh you ought to get nominated. <laughs> Just saying, you have friends, you clearly are doing well. I've seen you in action, I'm gonna be taking notes, so that speech tonight should be good. Make sure <laughs> there's somebody watching, so uh, no pressure. No pressure, so, you know, our paper really loves really loves to be involved in the community, really loves to be involved in this program because, you know, I mean, 
a lot of times the media is accused of just being negative. And it's true, at, time, at times we have to be negative. But I also believe, and our paper believes, that you need to hold up examples of things that are good, things that are going well. And the 40 Under 40 and our Women of Influence programs are that. I think this program is that. You need to show our youth, you need to show others in the community that things are going well and here's how to do it. So what this program does is that. So I would say to you that if you're in the room and you haven't yet, and you are an emerging leader and you want to be a 40 under 40, it's coming up soon. Actually our nominations are due, are due, due in, about, in about three months. You know, we're already seeking 2023, and, and I can tell you, I already have like 29 nominations in. So just telling you, there are people who get them in early. Uh, please nominate yourself. Please get involved. Please let us know the stories. We want to tell all. We want to tell stories about things and individuals who are having an impact on the community. So, so again, no pressure. I'm going to be. I'm going to be taking notes tonight. <laughs> have a great evening, and I really appreciate being here. Thank you. <laughs>young too
didn't expect that tonight. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, oh, I'm so honored and so humbled to be here with you tonight. Uh, I share this with a few people, the only other award that I've ever received in my lifetime. I was four, and I was at the Kenosha County Fair, and I won the Best Dimples Award. <laughs> So this is a pretty big deal for me, this, this award here tonight. Um, the thing I'm most excited is that I get to talk to you about Pink Umbrella Theater. And for weeks I've debated about what to say and the word expectation kept coming up. Um, it's a big word, it's a word that could have negative connotations and a word that is all encompassing. Quite a few years ago I sat in an annual review and my boss at the time said that my expectations of people are too high. And I just stared at her. And I thought, everybody have expectations? Doesn't everybody see the potential? Because I do. I see the potential in everyone that I meet. I see their talents, their passions, their ability to create, to communicate, to connect. Those are my high expectations. And I know that in order to reach your potential, you need to be safe and supported and secure. You need a place that meets you where you are in this moment and accepts you for all that you are. And at an early age, I was lucky enough to find theater. I could be anyone I wanted to be there. I was away from all of the troubles of the world. And I found out that theater has expectations of you as well. Theater expects you to be on time. Theater expects you to work as a team. Theater expects you to problem solve and to communicate, to negotiate, to empathize, and to understand your worth and value. And if you're willing to meet those expectations, theater will welcome you with open arms, where you get to feel safe and brave. Four years ago, I realized that Milwaukee didn't have this space, a theater space, for disabled actors and artists. And so Pink Bella Theater came to be because we know that theater doesn't care if you identify with a disability. Theater doesn't care if you are verbal or nonverbal, if you use an augmentative communication device, if you use American Sign Language to communicate. Theater embraces people who they are, where they are in that moment. And Pink Umbrella Theater exists so that a 12-year-old can play a leading role in a musical and not a tree so that a 55-year-old disabled playwright can share her journey through plays and staged readings, and so that I get to hand a 35-year-old woman her very first paycheck ever in her life. <clears throat> Pink Umbrella expects you to change your expectation of professional theater here in the city. And we will do that by changing the narrative and the narrator. And we are doing just that. We've seen over 150 students in our classrooms, musical theater, acting, improvisation, playwriting, and more. We've successfully produced five shows during the pandemic. And our sixth one opens on Saturday. <laughs> Check out our website. <laughs> 85% of our actors and artists and teachers identify with a disability, and the expectation is for that to be 100%. Even with my high expectations, the potential of this company is beyond my foresight. Because you see, this company belongs to the disability community, which is already full of actors and artists and people with business acumen to take this company to the next level. And that's a magnificent thing. I know that Pink Umbrella will not only meet my expectations, but will surpass them with flying colors and hopefully leave me in the dust. I feel a little bit like I did when I was four, standing there on that stage, the hot summer sun at the Kenosha <laughs> County Fair, wide open, gap tooth grin, and a blue ribbon with the best dimples prize, wondering what opportunities lay before me <laughs> in my life. I didn't realize that one day I'd be standing here before all of you and all of these brilliant award <laughs> honorees talking about the future of a company here in this city. Their potential is limitless, and no matter what, we will continue to create accessible theater for all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
That was beautiful. Thank you so much for those comments. Hi, everyone. I am uh, James Madlam, a 2021 P5 Award winner. It is so great uh, to see all of you here this evening. And I am honored and privileged to uh, share and introduce our second honoree of the evening, uh, Marquela Ellison. Uh, Marqu <laughs> Indeed, yes. A large cheering section, as there should be, as there should be. She has done so much in our community, um, and we'll list just a few as part of the introduction here tonight. Uh, she is the founder and the thriving creative force behind Elastic Designs, uh, which is a design firm that creates custom print and digital uh, designs for small businesses, nonprofits, corporations, really for clients across our community. Uh, she helps them bring their creative visions to life. Uh, organizations like the Milwaukee Health Department uh, in the midst of their COVID response, uh, Goodwill Industries, uh, the Medical College of Wisconsin, Running Rebels, these organizations that are making such a difference, she is helping them bring their vision to life. And we at Miller Communications, we've had the blessing uh, to have a front row seat uh, to so much of the work that she's done with clients like Near West Side Partners. As Mark shared uh, earlier tonight, she is also uh, a 2022 Business Journal uh, 40 Under 40 uh, honoree as well. And she regularly gives back to her community in so many ways. Uh, one of those are through facilitating uh, sip and paint sessions uh, at events throughout the city, including uh, the Milwaukee Repertory Theater uh, and Imagine MKE, as well as Bronzeville Week. Uh, and for those of you that haven't experienced Bronzeville Week, it's going on right now. Uh, take some time uh, to an enjoy event this week. She entertains her social side as co-owner and president of Social Acts MKE, a really incredible organization. Uh, young Professional Diversity and Inclusion Consulting Group that is making a difference for so many uh, in our community. Uh, she honed her creative skills at UWM, uh, where she earned a bachelor's degree in design and visual communications uh, from the Peck School of the Arts. She is a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, AIGA, and she chaired uh, the city's Millennial Task Force. Let's learn a little bit more about Marquela. Designs, I'm celebrating 11 years in business right now. Um, I do a lot of work in the community, so I like to take the time to shut my laptop and actually go out and do a lot of fun things. So I host different community art events, paint and sips, chalk art events, um, things encouraging people to get out and vote, uh, but really just projects connecting the community over art. A moment that stood out to me, again, would be uh, Bronzeville Week, um, the paint and sips that I do every year. Um, so that's in August, and it was something just fun. Um, I like to chat with people, be interactive, put on a good playlist, and just create like a whole vibe. Um, and I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Next thing you know, I'm doing it for like three, four years. But so many wonderful opportunities have come out of that. I've been able to teach. Uh, I found a new passion with working with kids and the arts in the community. Um, so that's really where it started from. So I'm happy I took up that opportunity and look for more ways to get involved. My name is Marquela Ellison. I'm owner of Elastic Designs LLC and co-owner of Social X Milwaukee. It is my pleasure to congratulate our second P5 winner of the evening, Marquela. I don't know who that lady is that they're talking about. <laughs> she sounds really busy and really tired. <laughs> um, I just want to thank everyone for being here. Um, I want to thank God first. 
he is my friend, he is my homie. Um, without him, nothing that I've done would be possible. The passion I found in the arts is definitely because of him and finding people to connect with, people to work with, people to uplift um, has been a beautiful thing. So he is my homie. If you don't know him, get to know him. <laughs> I will not be stingy with him. I also want to thank United Way um, so much for highlighting me today. Uh, we go way back. Um, I was a part of the 2017 cohort for uh, Project Lead. So I love United Way. They are a continued supporter of Social X um, and a great fan of Elastic Designs as well. I also want to thank my friends, my family, my supporters, and Angela Quigley for encouraging me to submit and helping me with that process. Uh, so just a few things, you know, I've always given back. I've always been a creative. I've always looked for a way to help others. Um, and as I've helped others, I've learned different things. Um, in order for me to be a better graphic designer, you know, I would take on projects at UWM with Hunger Task Force, doing flyers and things. Uh, I did it for free, um, but I wanted to highlight something that needed a flair to stand out from the rest of the competition. Um, I take it back to my sorority, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. It might be the best sorority. I don't want no beef. <laughs> um, they taught me to be action oriented, to be steadfast, to be consistent in what I'm doing. Um, I think about United Way and what I learned through Project Lead about being a servant leader, uh, which took me to my first board, which was Artworks in Milwaukee. I want to shout them out because that's who I decided to give my funds to. Artworks for Milwaukee, they take arts and use that to develop the soft skills in our youth today, uh, which is an amazing organization doing amazing things in the city. Um, and I'm always encouraging people through the arts, through what I do with Social X. Um, it's about creating a sense of belonging. I wanna see people having fun. I want you to feel like you belong there. And art is a great way to have conversations, to develop our youth, to cultivate new skills. Art is everything. And I'm glad I went up right after you so we could really enforce this message. You know, at one point in my life, I was an introvert, but then I took forensics and here I am now. So I say I have to say I'm a big advocate of the arts. And second to that, I'm a big advocate of understanding. Graphic design is definitely visuals, but it's more so understanding. Um, so a big project that meant a lot to me was the work I did with the health department. Just making sure we were all on a level playing field on what is COVID? What is the vaccine? Should my family get it or not? As much as you know, you want to make that decision for people, at least leveling the playing ground on what understanding is so everyone's able to make the same decisions. So um, I leave with just a few notes. I spoke um, for Lumen Schools once and I told them, uh, I'm not a gardener, but I always use this metaphor about really just tending to your garden. And Milwaukee is my garden. And I'm not that good of a gardener, but a little water, a little sun, you know, something gonna come up somewhere, you know? <laughs> so I really just encourage everybody to do their part. And I just want to end things with a quote from one of my favorite people, Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> and she says, I had to hop off the porch and get it. I went to pick up the torch and lit it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everybody. Oh, did you want to say hello? Hello, everybody. <laughs> no, we haven't done this for a while, so I feel awkward, too. My name is Jilly Gokulgandhi. I am a 2019 P5 winner, and I am so excited to be a part of this special night. Tonight, I have the honor of introducing our third Philanthropic Five honoree, Rachel Hunter. 
Rachel Hunter is a design engineer at Husco and the STEM director of a nonprofit organization called STEM to STEM. You're going to have to change it to STEAM to STEAM, though, to fit in with the other two ladies here today. Um, while pursuing her mechanical engineering de degree at the Milwaukee School of Engineering, she co-founded the STEM to STEM program with Will Bott of the Milwaukee Rowing Club. Today, the program has grown outside of Milwaukee into 25 cities, the United States, with the goal of removing barriers to entry in the sport of rowing and has partnered with U.S. Rowing to create a larger impact. Rachel creates a customized STEM curriculum for every program and works with each program to make sure students are set up for academic success. In addition to her engineering job and nonprofit work, Rachel has been an active volunteer for FIRST Robotics in Wisconsin since 2015 and is passionate about creating an inclusive and welcoming environment for all students to explore STEM. Let's hear from Rachel. exciting because I think it kind of represents that you're never too young to go after what you want to accomplish and I think it doesn't matter if you're 13 or 23 or 43 or 63 you can always try to make a difference so I hope that people uh, go after what they want to do and I hope that I can inspire young girls to go into STEM and engineering uh, by using me as a role model. Uh, at the beginning and end of every STEM to CERN session, I go around and I ask the kids what they want to be when they grow up. And usually in the beginning, the answers are, you know, NBA player, uh, football, you know, I want to be a musician, uh, things like that. And it's really interesting to see the answers transition. But I remember there was one time that a kid uh, said that he wanted to be an engineer. And we asked him why, and he said it was because of all the engineers he gets to work with. And that was really cool. I think the thing that I'm the most proud of is the number of kids that we've been able to impact uh, with the STEM to Stern program. The, seeing the impact in person with the kids in Milwaukee has really made a deep, uh, lasting impact on my life. But then knowing how many kids we're able to affect across the country really makes me feel proud of the work that we've done. My name is Rachel Hunter and I'm a design engineer at Husco. I'd like to say a big thank you to United Way for recognizing me with this award, and I also want to congratulate all of my fellow winners. It's a huge honor to stand among you, and I'm really inspired by all the work that all of you do in our community. When I was growing up, my mom and dad raised my two younger sisters and I on the belief that you can do anything that you set your mind to. It didn't matter if I wanted to be a firefighter, a teacher, an astronaut, or a librarian. Their answer was always that I would be a great one. The, this mindset has instilled a sense of confidence and trust in my support system. My parents continue to be my loudest cheerleaders and are always there to help me up when I fall. It wasn't until I started college and began running after school programs in Milwaukee Public Schools that I realized that not everyone grows up with this kind of unwavering support. I quickly learned that if I expected to teach anything meaningful, I first needed to build a foundation of trust with the students that I was working with. Two years later, when I began working with Will Bott and the Milwaukee Rowing Club to decide what STEM to Stern would look like, building relationships with the students was crucial to our success. As we have grown here in Milwaukee and expanded throughout the country, the values of trust, respect, and support are core to the work that we do. I'm grateful to be able to build real and meaningful relationships with students and their families, and I strive to set a good example for others to do the same. I would like to dedicate this award to every student that I have met and had the privilege to teach or mentor over the past six years. Knowing you is an honor that I will never be able to describe, and I'm overwhelmed with pride to see the people that you are becoming. I'm extremely grateful to work at Husco, where I'm surrounded by inspiring and supportive leaders and mentors. In addition to helping me grow into the best engineer that I can be, they've also put an emphasis on empowering me to be the best person that I can be. 
The biggest lesson that I've learned and want to leave with you is the ability to choose between when to lead and when to listen. Every interaction with a young person is an opportunity to change the way that they view themselves and the world around them. Giving them the space to grow and learn on their own terms while providing meaningful guidance builds the trust, respect, and confidence that are crucial to success. Thank you to all of my friends and family who are here, both in person and watching online, to celebrate with me tonight. It's an understatement to say that I would not be who I am without you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am Ashley Hines, a 2020 P5 winner. So I was on the couch at home watching. Um, so I'm really thrilled to be with you all here today um, to celebrate this wonderful group of community leaders. Tonight, I get to introduce to you our fourth winner, Angela Picararo. Angela began her technology career with Zywave and served as CEO at Advocent. Today, Angela is the operating manager or managing director at Vista Equity Partners, a global investment firm. In 2018, Angela began a corporate relationship with Code.org, a nonprofit that's dedicated to expanding access to computer science in schools and increasing participation by women and underrepresented youth. At Avicent, she initiated a corporate relationship with United Way of Greater Milwaukee and Waukesha counties and paid time off volunteer program for employees to support the needs of the community. That is a big deal. She also sponsored Avacent's first employee resource group, RAD, Women in Advocent, to retain, attract, and develop female talent. In 2020, she was named one of the top women in wealth tech innovation by Think Advisor highlighting success and opportunities for women in technology. In 2021, Angela joined the Wisconsin Parkinson Association. She served as the board member and was recently named vice president of the executive committee. Let's hear more about Angela. driven by the opportunity to just do the right thing. I'm really motivated by helping people and making sure that of all the blessings I've received in my life that I don't take those for granted and that I really role model this type of behavior for not only my family but the people that I work with and that I'm surrounded by. As far as it relates to the community work that I do, I'm most proud of two things. As the former CEO of Advice Ed, and under my leadership, we were able to launch a community effort to make sure all of our employees had paid time off to volunteer in the community. Uh, it wasn't only just encouraged, it was necessary. And so what we did is we tracked our involvement and started a relationship with the United Way to make sure our employees had access to a lot of different opportunities throughout our community. The second thing that I'm most proud of is current, my current work with the Wisconsin Parkinson Association. Uh, we're a small but mighty organization and we serve just about 10,000 constituents today. However, it is estimated that about 20,000 people suffer from Parkinson's disease in Wisconsin alone. So it's really important that we continue to work really hard to expand our service offerings, to raise money so that we can expand our services to many more people in this state. My name is Angela Pecoraro. I'm an Operating Managing Director for Vista Equity Partners. Congratulations to our fourth P5 winner of the evening, Angela Picararo. Angela could not be here with us this evening, but she recorded the following message. Hello, and good evening to everyone in Milwaukee. I'm disappointed that I could not be there to celebrate with all of you tonight. First, I'd like to congratulate all of those that are receiving recognition. The work you do is inspirational to me and to everyone else here tonight. It is an honor to be recognized alongside all of you. As a lifelong resident of southeastern Wisconsin, I am committed to giving back to our community 
and it's great to be recognized in this way. More importantly, I am thrilled that the Wisconsin Parkinson Association has been highlighted through this process. I joined the organization in honor of a dear friend, Joan. Joan's valiant battle with Parkinson's disease spanned decades and through all the challenges that PD introduced, she continued to demonstrate courage, grace, strength as a friend, wife, mother, and grandmother. It is in her honor and the thousands of Wisconsinites who depend on the programs and services we provide that I serve. By highlighting the Wisconsin Parkinson Association through this award, we will continue to move our mission forward. And representatives from the Wisconsin Parkinson Association are here tonight to receive this award on my behalf. If you or anyone you know could benefit from the services we provide, please definitely seek them out. And finally, a big thank you to the United Way of Greater Milwaukee and Waukesha County for this recognition. The work you do each day undoubtedly changes lives and improves our community. Cheers to great work, strong communities, and making an impact. To accept the award on Angela's behalf is Ron Mahorek, a fellow board member and executive committee officer for the Wisconsin Parkinson Association. Welcome, Ron. Please adjust the mic when you're five feet tall. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Nancy Hernandez, and they had to go dig into the Wayback Machine. I am a 2010 P5 award winner. <laughs> I'm also um, a 2022 United Way campaign co-chair, and very humbled to serve with this great organization. I also know Judy, it, Taylor is also here as well, and she is also a co-chair for the 2022 campaign. Um, what a fantastic evening, and these are all not just talented and dedicated individuals, but generous with their time and treasure, and um, I'm, I'm honored to be here with honoring all of these, our, our P5 winners today and our PY winner, right? Um, I have the privilege of introducing our fifth P5 award winner, Nick Welly. Nick Welly is a partner at Foley and Lardner, an international law firm with its main offices in Milwaukee. Nick is the chair of the health benefits practice. He focuses on providing legal advice related to health plans and the co-chair of the Milwaukee Pro Bono Committee, where he helps the firm pursue meaningful opportunities for Foley's lawyers to provide legal services to those in need. Within the firm and through his community volunteering, Nick dedicates hundreds of hours towards the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Milwaukee. It's okay, we can clap. He manages projects such as winter clothing fundraisers, camp cleanups, and backpack drives. He, al he also helped to start and still runs Milwaukee's Street Law Legal Diversity Pipeline Program, which is aimed at area high school students coming from diverse backgrounds and low-income households to spark their interest in pursuing a legal career. It's a semester-long course followed by an internship program with the hope that it fosters lifelong mentorship between diverse youth and lawyers in the Milwaukee community. One thing you might not know about Mike or Nick is that he is a double badger, having graduated from the Uni University of Wisconsin-Madison for both his undergraduate and law degree. Those of us who support Marquette won't hold that against him. <laughs> Let's learn a bit more about Nick.
significant amount of my time uh, for community outreach projects relates to the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, I do a lot of community outreach programs for the club, uh, including backpacks for students, winter clothing for students, uh, cleaning up the campgrounds for the club, and a big program that I help run, which is the Milwaukee uh, Street Law Program, which is a, pro a program aimed at increasing the level of diversity with, within the lawyer community here in Milwaukee. What drives me? Um, you know, I'm a big believer that everyone has 24 hours within the day. Uh, and it's how you manage those hours, or more specifically those minutes, uh, that defines you. Um, and so, you know, I want to be a great lawyer, but I also want to be a great father and husband, and I also want to leave a footprint in the community. So to do all of those things, you got to manage your minutes, and you got to get up and get after it, right? So um, you typically when I wake up at 5.15 in the morning, I try to get up and stay up because I want to excel in those things. And to do so, I got to get after it. My name is Nick Welly, and I'm a lawyer at Foley & Lardner. Wow, I kind of feel tall up here. I, just, I, I can get used to this, this is nice. Um, you know, I think it was like eight or nine years ago, Kevin Durant wins the MVP for the NBA season, right? We all know Kevin Durant. He almost took out the championship bucks, but he did not. Uh, and I remember watching his MVP speech, like he had this uh, acceptance speech, right? And I remember him talking about him overcoming the odds. It was this powerful story. Kevin's getting into it. He's crying. His mom's crying, telling his mom, you're the true MVP. Uh, single parent mom, one bedroom apartment. He overcame the odds, right? He did it. And I remember watching Kevin's speech and thinking, man, if I were ever to win an award, like my acceptance speech would really suck. It, it would be really bad because uh, I'm a kid of privilege, right? Uh, I've lived a pretty cush life. I like to make up stories about uh, overcoming adversity. I flunked kindergarten. It was, it was tough to overcome that. Um, but really, I have no story of overcoming adversity like Kevin Durant did and so many other people in the Milwaukee community, right? Um, and so what I thought to myself watching Kevin Durant win that speech eight or nine years ago, I was thinking to myself, well, if I ever win an award, it'd be pretty damn cool if I won, a, won an award because I helped somebody else overcome adversity. Or I helped somebody else um, overcome the odds, right? Because I don't deserve that. I was given every resource I, I needed, right? Grew up, white male kid in the suburbs, two amazing parents, emotional, financial, uh, safety net. Uh, you know, my dad likes to make fun of me. I, we had a nice used Honda Civic, and I was a dumb kid, and I would get in accidents, and the mechanic would fix it, and I'd get it back again, right? Uh, and the mechanic got so much business from us that he gave a Christmas card to my dad every year and said, thanks for your business. But, you know, I was a dumb shit kid who didn't realize that that costs money, right? Uh, and so, you know, I've tried through my community out outreach efforts to make maybe just a little bit of difference for one person and maybe help them overcome their story of adversity. I really candidly don't know if I have, but I certainly hope that I have. Um, so when I started Foley and Lardner uh, about uh, seven or eight years ago, I wanted to get involved, right? Uh, and Foley and Lardner has lots of ways to get involved, very much a culture of giving back to the community, right? Um, and so I started doing pro bono legal services f for the firm and getting involved in that. And then I started getting involved in the Boys and Girls Club. And immediately, I was like, this is it, this is awesome. Um, and so I had a, a really good connection with Andre Douglas and several other people at the club and said, look, there's several things we want to do here, but one thing we want to do is increase the level of diversity in the legal market. Because there's a bunch of lawyers walking around and a lot of them look like me, and I think we should fix that, right? Uh, and they should come from different backgrounds, whether it's your skin tone, economic or socioeconomic, whatever it may be, there should be diversity in the lawyers in our community, right? Um, so I tried to put together a program, and I hope it's made an impact. Um, thanks, sir. Thank you. Uh, and so it, it's been great to be involved with the club and all, all the things that we've done, and I hope, again, I've helped overcome someone else overcome their adversity story. Um, I also just want to acknowledge the fact that I have been motivated by my family members to, to do good, right? Uh, my mom does charity work in Haiti. 
constantly building schools and facilities in Haiti. My dad's always been involved in nonprofit organizations. My sister does a free medical clinic for the homeless in the Twin Cities. So me being sort of the corporate money grubbing lawyer in the family, I was like, damn, I better do something that like makes me less of a bad human, right? Um, so I've tried to do that and I'm very thankful for my family. Uh, very thankful for my wife who probably to a fault is so generous and gives back without thinking. Uh, and I hope one day I can match 1% of her generosity and to help others without thinking, how does this benefit me? Uh, I also want to thank my wife, Zara, uh, for her support because uh, I have a really crazy work schedule. I layer on some insanity of pro bono stuff and community outreach, and you've given me support, and supporting me is like a really selfless act. Uh, also, just want to thank the United Way real quick because this is a very, um, very amazing recognition, and it's so cool to be in a room of people that know Milwaukee is a great city, but know it can be even better, and are striving to do that. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I'm Anya Ramos, and I'm the 2021 Philanthropic Youth Award winner, and it's so great to be with you this evening! Tonight, I get the pleasure of introducing the 2022 Philanthropic Youth Award winner, Amira Adams. Amira Adams, also known as Amira the Poet, is a Theoban scholar at Alverno College. While majoring in communications and minoring in creative writing, Amira serves as the Obuts person for the student government president of the Black Student Alliance and a peer leader. Amira's goal is not only to teach, but inspire through the art of poetry. She serves, she is a change maker and a community advocate for social justice and human rights. Amira uses poetry as a tool to educate and inspire youth, peers, educators, and executives. Let's hear more about Amira. work that I've been doing, whether it be current or previously, I was a teaching artist for the Milwaukee Repertory Theater, teaching August Wilson um, to the students, talking about black playwright, as well as being an AmeriCorps Arts Advocate Specialist for the Boys and Girls Club, which included painting different boards to put on um, different boarded houses around the city, as well as teaching my own art form of poetry to the students and being able to be around the students and have that kind of one-on-one -on -one direct impact on them. Currently, I am sitting on the planning committee for the Women's Fund of Greater Milwaukee and I'm also an ambassador for Pretty Brown Girls, which is to uplift um, young brown women in their social emotional development. Being a part of the um, AmeriCorps for the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Milwaukee was just at the top of my list of what I'm most proud of, having that impact on the youth and being able to teach them about poetry, which I'm so passionate about, and how words matter. And one in particular, I, I got a chance to do a workshop with Eastbrook Academy, and they had me go to different classrooms and talk about my poetry and how I got into it. And so seeing all their faces, talk about how words matter, and I actually had them repeat a pledge, which was, I pledge to use my words for love and not for hate, to uplift and not to hurt, because my voice has an impact and my words matter. So seeing the youth repeat those words and really internalize that message and be able to spread that throughout the city of Milwaukee to their loved ones, to their friends, and show that their voice has impact and their words matter and that they could be sitting where I'm sitting in any day. My name is Amira Adams and I'm also known as Amira the Poet.
Hello, everyone. Um, first, I just want to say thank you for having me. Thank you to United Way for this honor and this recognition. Um, I do not take this lightly at all. I want to say thank you to my family, my village that is here that supports me, that keeps me um, close, that helps support me and uplift me and reminds me um, of who I am and my power every day, um, which I try to then go spread out into the community. I had a chance to work with the Boys and Girls Club, and there's so many people here from the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, Boys and Girls Club! <laughs> um, I love them so much. Um, it was another home to me, and being able to then give back and serve from being a club kid to being a club staff um, it was an amazing way um, to impact the youth. And just thinking about um, what I said in the video about the words matter pledge and how um, to not be a voice for the voiceless, but instead empower those who feel voiceless, that they have a voice, and to use theirs. Um, I think it's so important for people to be able to tell their own story and to verbalize their, their greatness within themselves. And so being able to use poetry as a tool to remind them that their voice matters and that they have an impact and that their voice is worth it. Um, and so... I also, working in a community with different youth, everyone comes from different backgrounds and different stories, and um, seeing all the work being done in the community of Milwaukee is amazing, and just knowing how much more work there is to do um, not only motivates me, but empowers me to continue to find different avenues to give back and to speak and to uplift. And before I get off the stage, I do just want to share one poem. I haven't shared this poem in public ever, actually, um, but I thought this would just remind us of the work we do and why I'm up here today. In a perfect world, RIPs would only come from old age. And when you say see you later, you actually have the option to. Guns would not grab the hands of the youth and bullets wouldn't whisper in their ear what they're supposed to do. When that trigger gets pulled and the tension built up releases, it will splatter ink on a page rather than blood on a pavement, I said in a perfect world. The only L you take is followed with another L and a C financially free when you can sit up and read a book rather than an obituary, I said in a perfect world. The only time you see balloons consuming the sky is for congratulations and not a goodbye. No tears left to cry but the happy ones. Everyone smiling and laughing fun. The only loud bang you hear is fireworks and not a gun. But I said in a perfect world. But that's not the reality. Every day there's another fatality. Bullets flying, bodies falling out here. Disrespect and gravity can never chill casually. Without it being casualty after casualty, how can you love your neighbor if you're killing them? Why can't you just move around if you're not feeling them? Pride so big, you scared to get your feelings hurt, but you're not too scared to put somebody else's family six feet in the dirt on a shirt. Think first. One wrong move or how you never move again. You can fool me once, but I'll never be your fool again. That back door is locked and bulletproof. You can't get through again. I said, you can fool me once, but I'll never be your fool again. Remember that karma is like a boomerang. Somehow it always knows how to find you. It'll go back and forth until everyone's fate is final. Too caught up trying to go viral. Feel like the end is near, time to open up a Bible. A real G is not about where you come from, it's about how you move. Not about what you post on the media, it's about what you actually do. It's not about being a hot head, but if you know how to keep your cool, anything else is falling victim to a fool, and I ain't have to be in the streets to learn that. And I ain't have to be from the streets to earn that. I hope you heard that. I'm only one generation improved from that life. One generation removed from that fight. I keep hearing, Mira, what you gonna do with that mic? <laughs> What you gonna do with that mic? I'm only trying to motivate the youth to do what's right. Thank you. And the work is not done. Right, you a hard act to follow, girl. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ashley Smith, and I am a co-chair for the Emerging Leaders Council. Um, first of all, congratulations to all of our winners. 
Um, you all truly demonstrate to us what it means to live united every single day. I'm here to talk to you about one of the key initiatives for emerging leaders, and that is our Emerging Readers Program. Research by the American Academy of Pediatrics examined the link between brain activity and young children in home reading exposure. They found a strong association between children being read to and activation in areas involved in language development. Statistics show that children who engage in reading 20 minutes a day are likely to score better than 90% of their peers on standardized tests. While I think we can all agree on the importance of reading, having books in the home is not always easy for some families. You can make a difference by purchasing books for our nonprofit agency partners in both Milwaukee and Waukesha County. Your donation to Emerging Readers will provide books to over 350 children in need and promote literacy within underserved populations. This year, Books will be purchased by purchased through Pinworthy Prebound Books, a locally owned Milwaukee-based small business. Your donation would allow United Way to purchase and distribute multiple books to children and their families during the 2022-23 school year. A donation of $10 will buy one book for a child in this program, and we recommend a donation of 50 to ensure that these kids have books to read throughout the year. You will find on your program a QR code. We made it real easy. So all you have to do is code with your phone camera to make a donation. And you can also visit our United Way website to give as well. Thank you for connecting the children in our community to reading. And thank you to all of our presenters this evening. Thank you to our sponsors, BMO Harris Bank and the Milwaukee Business Journal. Thank you to Molson Coors for providing libations for this evening's event. And we will all like to, we would like to invite you all to stay, eat, and drink, and celebrate our winners, and enjoy the beautiful view of Lake Michigan at our reception, which will be downstairs on the plaza. Congratulations again to all of our winners, and thank you everyone. Have a great evening.